Since Tesla first unveiled the new Roadster in 2017, their battery and motor tech has come a long way. In this video, we're gonna deep dive into the all new Roadster powertrain, and we're gonna see exactly what we can expect in 2023. There's a part one to this video where I go over battery technology, range, weight of the new Roadster. I'll put all of the conclusions from part one on the screen now. The most important ones being the battery capacity only needs to be about 150 kilowatt hours to reach the 600 mile plus range. And the curb weight of the car is gonna be somewhere in the 4,400 to 4,600 pound range based on the estimates I came up with. In this video, we're gonna be focused on performance. In 2017, when the Roadster was announced, they quoted a zero to 60 time in 1.9 seconds, a quarter mile time in 8.8 .8 seconds, and a top speed of 250 plus miles an hour. Since then, the official release date of the Roadster has gotten pushed back. Most recently, it's been quoted as coming out in 2023, but we have gotten glimpses of the Plaid powertrain with the Tesla Model S. The Model S Plaid is already the world's fastest accelerating production car. So what is Tesla gonna do to the Roadster to make it that much better and make it worth almost double the price? Price. Let's try to figure out what the Plaid platform is actually capable of. Back in early 2021, when the Model S Plaid was announced and on the Tesla website, they were offering a Plaid Plus version along with the Plaid version. The Plaid Plus version offered a little bit more performance and a 520 mile range instead of a 390 mile range in the normal Plaid. So the assumption is they're putting a lot more battery capacity in this car and they're pulling a lot more power out of the motors. You can easily extrapolate how big the battery pack is going to be if you use the estimated range that was provided by Tesla. So you divide 520 miles in the Plaid Plus divided by 390 miles in the normal Plaid. Since the normal Plaid model has a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, you see that you need about 135 kilowatt hours in the Plaid Plus to get that 520 mile range. And of course, adding battery pack capacity does come at a cost and that cost is weight. According to the EPA, the pack level energy density in the Model S Plaid is 186 watt hours per kilogram. Assuming the Plaid Plus has an identical pack level energy density, we can calculate how much added weight there is between the Plaid and the Plaid Plus. So we're adding 35 kilowatt hours of battery pack capacity. We're dividing that by our energy density, 0.186 kilowatt hours per kilogram. And we see that we're adding about 188 kilograms or 414 pounds due to that bigger battery pack. So our final Plaid Plus weight comes out to 5,180 pounds or the same as adding 414 pounds to the base Plaid. But when you add over 400 pounds to any car, the performance is gonna decrease. So how did Tesla promise more performance out of an even heavier vehicle? The answer is torque and power. Let's find out exactly how much. What I'm about to show you is a physics-based drag race simulator that calculates all of the forces acting on the car and the forces created by the car, and it outputs a simulated quarter mile. So this is a quarter mile on a prepped surface, so traction is not as much of an issue. We see a 1.9 second zero to 60 out of the Plaid Plus, and it keeps ripping through the quarter mile. We see an 8.96 at 157 miles an hour, which is right on par with what Tesla was claiming, a sub nine second quarter mile. So the simulation is telling us that because we added 400 pounds of weight for the Plaid Plus, it needs more torque and power, specifically 1,230 foot pounds and 1190 horsepower to reach that sub nine second quarter mile. What this means is if the Plaid Plus were created, each motor would have to produce 410 foot pounds of torque and about 300 kilowatts of power per motor. Compared to the base Model S Plaid that we see today, that's over 50 foot pounds of torque and about 50 kilowatts of added power per motor. Even though we never saw the Plaid Plus come to life, based on the performance numbers they were advertising, torque and power from the Plaid powertrain would have to be increased by a substantial amount. It's clear the motors are capable of more torque and power, and we're gonna try to land on an exact figure later on in this video, so just hang tight. One idea I've seen thrown around online is the fact that the Roadster could be a quad motor setup instead of a tri-motor setup like the Model S Plaid. We're gonna look at something called weight transfer, and we're gonna see why adding a fourth motor might not be so simple. In the Model S Plaid, for example, when you hit the accelerator, the motors produce torque. That torque is fed through a gearbox, which multiplies the torque figure by about seven and a half times. The torque is applied to the tire, which then applies a force onto the ground. And that acceleration 
is based on the wheel force and the mass of the car. So it takes a simple formula, acceleration is equal to wheel force divided by mass. So weight over the front axle actually decreases and you get a sensation of the front of the car lifting up. So to calculate weight transfer, it's pretty straightforward. You just need two parameters of the car. The first one is wheelbase, which is the distance between the center of the tires. And you need to know the height of the center of gravity, which is generally pretty low in electric vehicles. So to calculate an actual value for change in weight on each axle, you use acceleration multiplied by the center of gravity height divided by the wheelbase multiplied by the total mass of the vehicle. This still might not be very clear, but we're going to walk through an example with the Model S Plaid to give you some concrete figures. The mass of the Model S Plaid is about 4,800 pounds. Its weight distribution is 48% front, 52% rear. I don't know the exact center of gravity height on the Plaid. I did see online somewhere that the old Model S had a center of gravity height of 18 inches. So I'm going to assume that's a little lower in the Plaid and we're going to use 16 inches. The wheelbase is 116 inches and we know from motor trend testing that peak acceleration is 1.227 G's on a street surface. So you can see the layout here. We have 2,500 pounds over the rear axle, 2,300 pounds over the front axle. And we're going to calculate the change in weight on each axle at peak acceleration. So we use our formula from above. We take our acceleration figure, 1.227 G's, multiplied by our center of gravity height, 0.4 meters, divided by our wheelbase, 2.9 meters, all multiplied by the weight of the car. And we see that about 800 pounds of weight is transferring from the front to the rear. And that's why you can literally see the Model S lift up the front end, not off the ground, but you can physically see the front lifting up under peak acceleration. So just to summarize, I have the no acceleration weight distribution on the top and peak acceleration weight distribution on the bottom. You can see that at peak acceleration, about 69% of the mass of the vehicle is over that rear axle and only 31% is over the front axle. And so when we talk about Roadster, since we know that the rear axle will take at least two thirds of the weight under peak acceleration, we don't want to add a motor to the front axle where it's already struggling for traction. Yes, it will help higher speed acceleration where traction isn't a problem, and it will actually make weight distribution more biased towards the front, but in my opinion, it'll still be a complete waste of torque and power for the added weight that'll come with another motor. Another reason why I went through all of those calculations is just to show you why the current Plaid is a tri-motor setup, and two-thirds of the power goes to the rear and one-thirds goes to the front, because those are the exact weight distribution conditions under peak acceleration. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about tire limitations. Motor Trend tested the Model S Plaid on a street surface and a prep surface, and they already showed that Tesla is right at the peak of traction limitations on the Plaid. You can see the time discrepancies in road surface versus prep surface, and this illustrates that the Plaid is already struggling for traction on a street surface at the peak capabilities of its tires. The tires on the Plaid are a Pilot Sport 4S, and they're reaching a max street acceleration of 1.23 Gs as tested by Motor Trend. But there's gotta be better tires than this, right? How good can street tires get? Arguably the stickiest street legal tire is the Pilot Sport Cup 2 and Sport Cup 2 Rs. This tire happens to be on a Motor Trend tested car, the Porsche GT2 RS, and they achieved the shortest stopping distance of any car they've ever tested. They achieved 60 to zero miles an hour in 87 feet, which is ridiculous. And that comes out to a 1.38 G acceleration, which is the most acceleration I've seen for any sort of street going tire. I know this is stopping, not accelerating, and there's a few variables at play here, but I think this is a good estimate for how much acceleration we could expect out of the pinnacle of road going tires. So let's make the assumption that the best street legal tires are capable of about 1.3 G's of acceleration on a street surface. And using some basic physics equations, we can calculate what zero to 60 time that would give us. So if we take our speed, AKA 60 miles an hour or 26.82 meters per second, 
and divide by our acceleration, 1.3 Gs or 12.75 meters per second squared, we see that it gives us a theoretical zero to 60 time of 2.1 seconds, which is the same as about 1.9 seconds flat with one foot rollout subtracted. And this is right in line with what Tesla originally advertised with the Roadster. Also keep in mind that the Pilot Sport Cup 2 has downsides. It's basically a street legal track tire that has half the tread life of a Pilot Sport 4S and it also has a lot more rolling resistance, so range will be decreased by a substantial amount. And if you don't believe the figures I just went through, Elon Musk said it in a tweet himself. Plaid is pretty much at the limits of acceleration on the street, and that's all because of tire limitations. But that's only to 60 miles an hour, right? How fast could a quarter mile get, assuming we still have those same traction limitations? Let's go back to the simulator and find out. So what I've done is created a version of the Model S Plaid but it has a flat torque curve. So this will actually create linear increasing power all the way to its top speed. And it peaks out at 4,000 horsepower at 20,000 RPMs. Let's see how fast this thing runs a quarter mile with the same traction limitations. I've set up a quarter mile with this crazy plaid and a base plaid on bottom. So the top one has a completely flat torque curve. And as you can see, it's gonna keep hitting those traction limitations through the entire quarter mile. So through the whole quarter mile, it's actually limited by the tires. And we can see that the quarter mile doesn't even dip below eight seconds. So we see an 8.14 at 207 miles an hour versus the stock Model S Plaid, which is about 9.3 seconds at 152 miles an hour. If you compare the base Model S Plaid quarter mile at about 9.3 seconds to the old Model S Performance Raven quarter mile at about 10.4 seconds, and if you look at that 1.1 second improvement from the Raven to the Plaid, and look at the difference of these two cars, which is about 3,000 horsepower, and you're still only seeing about a 1.1 second improvement. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is we can only go as fast as the tires will allow. And in this demonstration, the car is literally traction limited through the entire quarter mile. And you can see that reflected in the quarter mile time. It can really only get so fast. Cool, so we talked about weight transfer, we talked about tire limitations, we talked about the Plaid Plus. Now let's talk about top speed because Tesla wants this thing to be able to go really fast. So again, we're gonna use our best metric, which is the current Model S Plaid as it will have a really similar powertrain. We can calculate how many RPMs the motors will be spinning at at 200 miles an hour if we know the dimensions of the tires as well as the gearbox reduction ratio. So in the Plaid, the front tires are 265, 35, 21s, and in the rear, they're 295, 30, 21s and I've calculated the diameters of those tires, which you can then get revolutions per mile from using the circumference of the tire. And we know that the final drive ratio in the front and the rear is about 7.56 in the Plaid. Tesla advertises a 200 mile an hour top speed, even though we know it can't go that fast yet, they are claiming it. So wheel speed at 200 miles an hour is 2,404 RPMs. And if you multiply by our final drive ratio, we see that the motor would be spinning at 18,170 RPMs, and this aligns pretty well with that 20,000 RPM limit that Tesla's claimed. So let's look at the Roadster. You can actually control gearing with two things. You can simply change that reduction ratio of the gearbox, so the speed between the tires and the motor is different, or you can actually change the dimensions of the tire. Based on the tires we've seen on the Roadster prototype, they're 325, 30, 21s in the rear, and this comes out to a 28.7 inch diameter, so pretty similar to the Model S Plaid, and that equates to about 703 revolutions per mile. If we assume the same final drive as the Model S Plaid, 7.56, we can calculate wheel speed and motor speed at 250 miles an hour because that's the figure that Tesla's claiming. So wheel speed comes out to almost 3,000 RPMs, and that translates to a motor speed of about 22,000 RPMs. And so will Tesla lower the final drive ratio to keep that motor RPM down? I think not. I think Tesla is gonna be able to increase peak motor RPM, maybe all the way up to 25,000, but they only need 22,000 RPMs to hit that 250 mile an hour mark. And at those speeds, they might be limited by other factors like heat, and tires. And Elon even tweeted about this, stating that they have ideas to increase the max RPM of the motor specifically for the Roadster. 
So I don't think they're actually going to change the final drive ratio. I think they're going to keep it at 7.56 to keep that really high torque figure. So what have we learned so far? Plaid motor potential is a little bit unclear, but we know based on the Plaid Plus claims that the motors are capable of at least 300 kilowatts each. We know that because of dynamic weight transfer, roughly two thirds power in the rear and one third power in the front is optimal. And we also touched on tire limitations, which Tesla is already struggling with. The best tires will only allow a zero to 60 time of about 1.9 seconds on the street with that one foot rollout subtracted. So what I've done is created three theoretical variants of the new Roadster. The first one is using the exact same power and torque figures I extrapolated from the Plaid Plus and putting it into a car that weighs 4,400 pounds. So what I'm about to show you is a quarter mile on a street surface with this first version. And we can see a zero to 60 time of 1.98 seconds, zero to 100 in 3.7 seconds, and a quarter mile in 8.8 .8 seconds flat at 163 miles an hour. The second version is a quad motor setup with the same output figures that we extrapolated from the Plaid Plus, but we're gonna add a motor to the front axle. So here's a quarter mile on the street you should see that the zero to 60 time does not improve. Zero to 60 in 1.98 seconds because we're traction limited. And you can see that front axle was struggling for traction up until about 130 miles an hour. We see an 8.58 second quarter mile at 173 miles an hour. And finally, the third version I came up with, which is what I think the Tesla Roadster will closely resemble. It's a tri-motor setup. Each motor makes 400 kilowatts and it's based on the same Plaid powertrain we see today. And it weighs 4,400 pounds and we're gonna see exactly how fast it is. So you can see the figures there, almost 1,500 horsepower and 1,500 foot-pounds of torque combined. This is a quarter mile on a street surface. Since we are traction limited, we see a 1.96 second zero to 60 and a quarter mile in 8.5 seconds at 173 miles an hour. And if we move this thing onto a prep surface where traction is a lot better, we see almost 1.4 Gs of peak acceleration, 1.7 seconds to 60, and a quarter mile in 8.2 seconds at 174 miles an hour. This would make the Roadster the fastest production car, and it would definitely dethrone the insanely fast Remak Nevera. I hope you guys liked the video, and I hope you learned something. If you want to check out part one, I'll put it on the screen right here. Otherwise, stay tuned for part three, where I'll be talking about the SpaceX rocket thrusters. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.